Hello, I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2016. And this is a series of tutorials running right way through 2017, uh, which are covering the, the key real world applications of Cork Express. Well, today we're going to be looking at a question which was uh, posed of me quite a few times, uh, which is how do you create calendars uh, in Cork Express? So, uh, okay, you might say it's a bit late in the year to be creating calendars, but uh, these things come up all the time. Um, somebody wants a, a month calendar to go into a newsletter. Somebody wants a calendar to show what they've done throughout the year for their annual report. Uh, somebody wants a calendar in a magazine page, all kinds of things. And it's a good example of the three ways we can create tables in Cork Express. So I'm going to begin with uh, an Excel uh, calendar, which someone else has done for me. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because you can find these things everywhere. You just Google Excel calendar template and there you are. Now, what I've done is I've uh, just actually copied and pasted the calendars it made into Word and back again because I only want the numbers and there are some ridiculously complicated formulas uh, in these calendar templates. I don't want them and they can cause things to go a little bit funny. So the first and most obvious way is just to um, cut, copy and paste. So let's try that. Um, this is January uh, of, of this year. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll go to a Quark document. Here's one I posted earlier, but just to show we're not cheating, we'll create a new page and uh, in we go. So uh, I'm going to just paste, bang, it's done. Okay, so that's come in with uh, the fonts and the um, colors that uh, Excel has done, but no other styling. So as you can see, the, these, um, uh, these boxes underneath, so you've got a box for the date, uh, and um, just go into mouse posey there so we can see, you've got a box for the date, you've got a box for space underneath. And we can uh, naturally, you know, uh, format that all we like. Um, uh, so we can go to the tables uh, tool at the bottom here, and we can, uh, for example, just set all the grids to be uh, um, to, to be um, transparent entirely, and then we get that. And there's various other things you can do, and and uh, play to your heart's content. But there are two problems with this particular kind of calendar. First is that you can be, spend quite a long time playing with it to your heart's content, and we'll we'll get to how to format tables in a second. But the second thing is that it's not updatable. So once you've pasted it in, that's it. So the second way which we're going to look at calendars is auto updating. Now here's a calendar I made earlier, um, and this is not using uh, style sheets or anything particularly, but, but all I've done is given it uh, some borders, uh, made some things together and so on. And what's interesting about that is that this is actually lifted from the Excel spreadsheet I showed you. So it's, it's referencing that spreadsheet. Um, but if that spreadsheet updates, we can then update, as long as we save it first, um, we can then update in Quark Express uh, the calendar itself. And we do that via utilities uh, usage and um, see it out tables, it says uh, modified, and all we've got to do is update that, and uh, the table will refresh with whatever else we put into it. Now you might say, well, why would I bother to do that? The uh, days of the month aren't going to change, are they? Well, you might have a spreadsheet for one year, which you just want to update for the next year, uh, but it also it's possible that you've got a spreadsheet which actually includes uh, information about other things. So uh, it's never too early to plan for Christmas, I always feel. Let's just then create such a table. So I'm going to go to the table tool. Uh, let's just do that again. So table tool over here, uh, and I'm going to drag it out to give me my uh, positioning uh, as I want it. And um, what we can see there uh, is that it's offering various options. I can, I can make rows, I can make columns, 
auto fit and so on, but I don't want any of that. What I want right now is to link to external data. And uh, I can then browse and it'll go to my calendar, which is called calendar numbers only. And uh, if I say, um, what should we say, A, uh, I'm gonna give it some rows. Now you, you, you can give each one of these a separate sheet, but uh, I put them all on the same sheet. It might be slightly easier to give them a separate sheet. Uh, and uh, we will not include the format, but we'll include the geometry. And that comes in like that. Now, if I were to update that data in Excel, then every time I updated it, it would change here, even after I'd formatted it. So um, I can, for example, uh, using the text tool, uh, go across the top here and give that uh, a, a tint, actually that's the text, but I can give, I can give it a, a tint of that color. Uh, so let's make that, a, that makes that a tint, um, say 30%. And I can, um, so I lost myself there. I can uh, format that text any way I want. I can use style sheets. Um, uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, I can now uh, give all these a, a style. So I'm gonna call these, actually what I've done before, I've set some styles up. I'm gonna call that day. Um, and we'll call these date. Uh, and as long as I don't change the geometry of the table, when Quark loads that in again, when I do update in usage, um, it will keep all this formatting. Uh, now, you might say, well, that that's doesn't look great right now. We can put a, um, uh, if we do contextual menu, so that's command, that's a control click on a Mac, or right click on a PC. I can select the, uh, the border and give that, uh, you know, whatever I like. Let's call it that. Um, and, and so on and so on and so on. And I can do all that formatting. And that formatting is good per one that I create. And if I then save an Excel table, it will then lift into here uh, some interesting information. So let's, let's forget that one for a second and look down to the bottom of this and we'll get, uh, so we need to know it's A156 to G168. So we're gonna create this table now. And uh, again, as you can see, I've got these options. I don't need these options. It's gonna lift it from the table, link to external data. Okay, uh, I'm gonna to go to that table again, um, open. Now, what did I say it was? Let's check again. It's uh, A156 to uh, G168. So let's put that in. A156 to G168. Don't want the formats. Do you want the geometry? And uh, what it's now done is included various bits of information like children's party, this is December uh, 2017, children's party, carol service, carol singing, midnight service, Christmas day party, and so on. And as long as I've got one table, which I want to keep updating in that way, uh, and I'm not taking it from a different place in the spreadsheet, this is gonna be fine. But uh, it is a bit of a chore to do all that formatting. What if we could do it automatically? with styles. Well, here's a, here is that exact table. And uh, what I've done for this, uh, I've going to uh, window table styles, is I have created a style called calendar. And it's really a really simple one. So, uh, okay, here at the top, I've got the name, I've got the frame type for the outside, I've got its width, I've got the color, uh, I've got no particular cell spacing. And then I've just got three different things. One is the default, so the, the default is normal, white background, two points at the top, two at the bottom, two at the left, two at the right, and uh, a couple of grids. Then I've got for even rows. So uh, this particular spreadsheet, remember, has got a row for the date and then a row for um, the, the thing that's gonna go with that date. Obviously, if you're just making a plain calendar of nothing in it, you don't need that feature, but that's what this spreadsheet has got. Let's go back to Quark Express. So even rows, what I've done is I've set them a six point uh, gap at the top, 14 points at the bottom, two at the left, zero at the right, 
and its date. And again, that grid line I've set. And then for row one, which could also be a header row, though I haven't defined it in this, uh, I've given it uh, a different uh, style sheet, text style sheet, which is day. So these are style sheets like the paragraph style sheets over here, which I've otherwise created. Let's cancel that and let's import a table uh, doing exactly that. So here goes again uh, on the right, uh, so on the left, uh, I've got the table tool. Uh, you can press G if you want that, um, and it will, as long as it's not in text, obviously it'll prefer the letter G, it'll, it'll take you there. And I just make the box the size I want it. Again, I'm not putting rows and columns in. Uh, we'll look at that some other time, but I'm going to link to external data. Okay, uh, go back to that same uh, calendar numbers only. Uh, and uh, again, I want to know, uh, I think it was 156, yeah, 156 to 168. Um, so A156, we type that in there, and G168, I don't know why, why it wants H there. And now we're going to take inline table. Again, I want to get rid of include formats. I'm going to give that the style of calendar. And we're going to say fit to box. Okay, I've got no header rows. If I wanted header rows, I can format them differently, and also I can have them break across pages. Um, but for this one, I don't need that, so here goes. Bang, in it comes. Now, um, as you can see, that is as already fully formatted. Uh, you might not like the formatting, it is a bit Christmassy, but then it is planning for Christmas 2017. Um, it's all sorted out in that way. Um, and uh, the result is that um, uh, you could change it. You could have hundreds of these. So imagine that you're doing uh, a, a series of calendar type, type, type templates for people. And you've got seven or eight different teams. They all want their own calendar. Every sales team wants its own calendar. And they've decided they want them done by you because you make them look so nice. And all you've got to do is just click, click, click. Uh, and it will create each one in the right way. And again, like the self-updating tables, when you change the table in Excel and save it, you can update this using uh, utilities, uh, usage, uh, and then tables. And you can see it's modified there, and I can do update. Well, that's it for creating a calendar uh, in tables. Uh, three very simple ways of doing it. I can just paste it in and then format it using the line tools. I can uh, load it uh, and then format it. And I can load by using external data in Excel uh, and format it. And it will then update with whatever changes I make to that, tab that, that table in Excel. But if I want to use any table in Excel, in any spreadsheet, no matter where it is, and I want to have hundreds of these knocking around, I can create some very simple style sheets in table styles, and they allow me to set the background, the frame, and the style sheet and the spacing for, for pretty much each cell individually. You can get right down to it. Um, then uh, that's definitely the way to go. It's a very powerful feature in Cork Express 2016. Uh, these things are improving all the time. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to look at an example of where we can publish an entire document using uh, Excel as a kind of database back end and just using tables. But that's for the future. For now, thank you very much for watching. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing for Cork Express 2016. Uh, you can get it from Amazon or in your local bookshop. I look forward to seeing you next time.